Hey CNCers, in this video we're going to walk you through some common issues that you may have come across with your 48 by 30. This is pretty critical to making sure that everything is tuned properly in order to have your machine run correctly. The same principles can also be applied to our long mill 30 by 30. Andy will walk you through this installation and tuning using some of the clips from our 48 by 30 assembly video. You can find the link to the full video down below. I start putting on the first robot onto the z-axis and this will go on in the back right here so we need two more 25 millimeter bolts and let's pop them through yeah and fun fact we try to make, as you can probably tell, we try to make the whole machine assemblable with M5 25 millimeter uh, bolts. So you're gonna use them a lot today. An important thing for me to point out here is do not tighten the bolts down too much. Um, what can happen is the threads on the nut can deform if they are too tight, which will cause your lead screw to bind. You should just need to tighten them until your locking uh, washers are compressed, uh, but, but just do it very lightly um, or just back them out a little bit. When we do the testing, we can make these adjustments later as well. So yeah, I got the, I got the, uh, what do you call them? Delrin nut put on. I'm just gonna try to, Line it up a little better, straighten it out. Okay, that should be it. So the next one we're do we're gonna do is uh, put the another robot on the back, which is for the x axis to go left and right. Um, specific for the forty eight by thirty, we're gonna be using the bigger nut. So I'm gonna go find the bigger nut. which is this guy. As you can see, they're slightly bigger. Um, and you'll want to put the M5 nuts on the back the same way. So something else to point out, these XD guarantees come with multiple sets of holes. So if you're going from a 30 by 30 or a 12 by 30 to a 48 by 30, you'll be able to use the same hardware. Um, in this case, we're going to use a out two outside holes basically to uh, bolt this in. Um, but I believe you want this on the left left side actually let me double check should be on the right side facing this way on on this one uh, look at the instruction manual I believe it has to go on this way because uh, the uh, if you have a dust shoe, it'll be on. It'll be on bolted to the other side. So two M five bolts put onto the back here or the front here. And once again, um, make sure these are snug but not too tight, just so that you avoid not crushing the uh, threads.
Okay, there you go. With the nut on the back. The next thing we're gonna do is uh, put another set of robots on. Um, so the robots need to go on the same side as the V-wheels. And um, they should be centered to the uh, centered to the, uh, the the wheels. Let's see if I can get this right. Okay, so they should sit on the top. Top two sets of holes. And once again, uh, don't do create. Don't go too crazy on making these too tight. There you go. And I'll rinse and repeat the process for my other side. Oh, I should also point out that the sc screw should point to, to towards this divot so you can adjust the screw what, later down the line. Already. So now I have a set of Y gantries assembled. End of the coupler on the motor. So, like so. Yeah, so you gotta make sure this lead screw is pushed all the way in, and then the coupler needs to get pushed this way. So it's make doing that whole sandwich thing again. All right, so now we can tighten the motor side. So we'll just swap, uh, take the Allen key out and put the, put the bolt back in. Okay, and then I'll use this to crank down on the motor side as hard as I can. Yeah, so this part, the metal for the coupler is quite, rigid so it needs a lot of force to actually uh, get it to tight be tight <laughs> okay that should be okay Oof. very nice okay cool okay. Uh, we're gonna adjust the eccentric nuts so I'll show you guys how to do that uh, where's my wrench um, okay so um, basically adjusting the eccentric nuts is all the same for all the eccentric nuts at least conceptually so I'll show you how to do one or two and then I'm sure you guys can figure out the rest so right now that's this is where our this is our eccentric nut you can see there's a difference between um, the regular nuts and this so the way that you want to adjust it, you test out how much uh, looseness there is. You can see, basically, I can turn this easily by my finger. What I want is that the tightness between the two is high enough that it's difficult uh, to basically rotate it. I'm going to move this a little further so I can get past the drag chain. But yeah, so right now you can see it's a little bit loose. So I just need to tighten it a little bit. So to do that, I'm gonna put the Allen key here and I'm gonna use the other side to basically tighten it down to um, a little bit further so that it's clamping further down. 
Um, Chris has a, a, a good video on how to do this as well. And so tighten this down, double check how hard it is. And you can see it's basically impossible to turn by hand. So I'm gonna loosen the light, open it up just a slight amount until I can just barely turn it. Yeah, that's pretty good. So you can see, I can still turn it, but it's almost like solid on there. The excess has the eccentric at the bottom. So I'm gonna move on the Z axis so I can get better access to it. And I'll check how loose these are. These are pretty loose. So same process, stick the Allen key in the back. And then keep tightening the nut until you're clamping a little stronger onto the X axis. Yeah, that's pretty good. And do the same on this side. There you go. So yeah, if you do, if you make it a little too tight, um, it might be adding a bit, oops, it might be adding a bit more resistance to the movement. So just double check if everything moves smoothly. You could also double check by shimmying around the machine. If you see any like looseness, um, you can probably tell if it's a, uh, for the view wheel or not. Doesn't need to be 100% exact everywhere. Um, as long as it's like taking up all the slack, you're okay. Um, so if it's, if you're not 100% sure, don't worry about it too much. Um, with a little bit of experience, you should be able to kind of get an idea on how tight it should be. This, this one's good. This one, these one, these, this side is actually pretty good already. The next thing we'll do is uh, to adjust the Delrin nuts. So there's two things to do, tighten, to tighten these back down if they're loose. So I'll just tighten them until the washers are squished. And then this screw here, basically, um, basically with a nut like this, the, by turning this screw until it hits the plastic here, it pushes the two halves separate. There's threads on this side and threads on this side. So it takes up the slack within the thread. Over time, the threads will wear and the nut will wear. And what this does is take up the slack as it wears out. So every once in a while, I'd say like once a week or something, i just double check to make sure these are uh, taking up the slack and every 2,000 to 3,000 hours uh, these are supposed to be replaced. So I'll show you guys how to adjust these. So first you want to see if there's any looseness by pulling the gantry back and forth. So there's very little play because um, well we this is a brand new nut so there's very little play. Um, so all I'm gonna do is keep turning the nut until it hits the other side of the nut, because right now we have a gap there, right? I even be able to do it by hand. There you go. So yeah, no play there. That's good. And I'll do the other side too. Cool. And then lastly, we can double check the X axis as well. So I'll move the Z axis, oop, the Z axis so I can get to the nut. Okay, so I'm gonna use this Allen key because this one is too short. I don't like the way that they we designed that. It's a little annoying. Luckily, these don't need to get, the X axis with the T12 doesn't need to get adjusted as much, but it is, it is something to do, so. I'm just gonna do the same thing. Tighten this. As far as I can. Can I bring it in like this? No. I'm gonna make a complaint. 
last bolt here. Tension this. That's good. From this video, you should have a good understanding of the following. Motor couplers need to be extremely tight. The mounting bolts for the anti-backlash nuts should be snug. Do not over tighten. The lead screw should be tensioned using the tensioning bolts only and how to adjust the V-wheels for smooth rolling. And remember, this and more information can always be found in our CNC resources, where you can find plenty more troubleshooting, explanations, machine handbook, software assistance, and more.